Hello everyone, this is Shivam. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today we'll be doing a hands-on demo where we'll be creating a Hello World uh, web Python application. Uh, we'll be deploying it uh, onto a Kubernetes cluster and we'll be creating a Docker image for our application. So let's get started. As you can see, I have already written uh, the Hello World Python application. Uh, this application will be using Flask as its uh, web framework. Uh, so this application is doing uh, nothing uh, special. It's just printing Hello World. Uh, so let's see whether if it is uh, working in our local or not. Let me run the application and it is running on IP this and, and we can see that the application is working. It says hello from Python. So now uh, let's create uh, our uh, services. Let's create the Docker file. So I have already written the contents of the Docker file. Let me just copy it. So here we are using Python 3.8 as our uh, base Python version. Then we are exposing port 30001 on which we will be accessing our uh, uh, pod. Then we are creating the work directory. We are copying requirements.txt. So this file, it says requirement.txt. It says Flask. So what we are doing here, since we are using Docker as our runtime, uh, we are putting all our uh, dependency, whatever is needed to run our application into one separate file. It's basically like externalizing our uh, configuration. So here what we are doing is we are just copying our file and then we are installing it, whatever is inside this file. So in case if we have not been, uh, deploying our application onto Kubernetes and we simply had to run it on our local, then we could have just uh, written this command pip install minus r flask uh, by typing this onto our terminal. Then we are copying uh, main.py uh, uh, to the directory and we are executing this command. Since this is a Python application, we are using Python as its command and we are executing main.py file. Uh, nothing fancy, uh, very simple hello world application uh, we are trying to execute here. Now the next step will be is to create a docker image out of it. So let's create a docker image. For this we will have to build our docker file. So let me go to the directory where my code is present. So now I am in the directory where uh, my docker file is present let's build it so to build it uh, we'll be using docker build command which is docker build minus t and the name of our image which says let's say hello py and we'll be giving a version to it let's just say 0 0.1 and then dot this dot signifies that our docker file is in our current directory let's see what just happened So now we can see that it is executing all the steps, whatever we mentioned in our uh, Docker file. So now let's check whether our image was created or not. Docker images. Uh, it says hello py. Okay. So our image is created hello py and this is the tag which we created. Now the next step will be is to push uh, our Docker image to our remote repository. Uh, but before pushing that, we will have to tag uh, our image. So let's do that. Docker tag the name of the image in our local directory. 0.1 and the name of the remote repository. This is the name of my remote repository where I would like to push it. So this is my repository name and let's just say 0 0.1. Okay, so our image has been tagged. Let's check the image. Oh, 
okay we can see this docker image is here so let me push this image docker push along with the tag now let's check whether our image was pushed or not okay i'm in my docker repository now uh, let's check and we can see the image is here 0.1 which was pushed a minute ago so we are good until here now the next step will be is to create a kubernetes pod out of it uh, by using our image so uh, let's create a pod uh, using our current image so docker image i'll be using the imperative command to create the pod which is kubectl run pod name let's just say hello py minus minus image equal to So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to create a pod uh, with the name hello py and I'm using the image which I just created and I'm redirecting to a file which is pod.yml. Now let's see what is the content inside pod.yml. Okay, so as we can see, uh, it took our image, uh, but one important uh, thing is missing the container port on which it will be uh, running. So let's edit or we can go back to our editor and we can try editing it. So this is my pod configuration and let's add port to it. Ports and then container port. this looks okay to me let's create our pod it says pod created let's check it says pod is running uh, let's just describe our pod and see the events Okay, it uh, used our uh, image which is hello py colon zero one and it created our pod and it started our container. So, okay, so our pod is now healthy. The next step is to create a node port service uh, so that uh, we can access our pod uh, from our web browser. So let's go back to our editor and create a service for this. Okay guys, so I have written the service and couple of things to note here is uh, as we can see the service type is uh, node port and uh, uh, the service itself is running on port 30001 and this target port uh, corresponds to the port whatever we have defined in pod configuration. So this 30001 should match with this container port. So suppose this container port is 5000, then we'll have to specify target port as 5000. Now, one more important thing to remember here is how service will come to know that I have to connect with a particular pod. So how services and pods are linked together in Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, there is a concept called selectors and labels uh, by which we connect uh, service to a pod so labels are defined in the 
pod configuration as we can see here here uh, the label is run equal to hello py and inside service uh, we have selector so inside selector we have declared run equal to hello py so this hello py is referring to this pod so now let's go and uh, apply our service and see whether uh, it is working or not it says service is created let's check our service uh, hello svc okay it got created let's do a describe on the service and we can see here the selector is run equal to py so now our service has been connected to our pod instead of doing a describe on the pod uh, we can uh, use a minus o wide flag to see whether our uh, service is connected to our pod or not okay i misspelled it Okay, as we can see here, the service was created 91 seconds ago and the selector is run equal to hello py and the service type is notebook. So this confirms that our service is now connected to our pod. The last step here will be to expose our service on port 3001 uh, so that it can be accessible via browser. So this kubectl port forward uh, will expose the port 3001 of our service so that our pod can be accessible via browser. This minus n equal to default specifies that all our resources are created in the default namespace. So let's apply this command. And it says forwarding from 127.0.0.1 colon 30,000. Now let's copy this and try to see whether our application is accessible from browser or not. Okay, it says hello from Python. So our application is now accessible from the browser and this is what exactly we wanted to achieve in this tutorial. Noteport service is not a very good security practice to work on as it exposes our application on a certain port to the outside uh, world. Uh, most of the time, uh, whenever at an enterprise level uh, there is a Kubernetes cluster, uh, they use uh, a service called Load Balancer to expose uh, their application to outside world. All the source code and the GitHub link will be mentioned uh, in the description of this video. Please feel free to check it out. Uh, that's it in this video. I hope this uh, tutorial was informative for you guys and I'll see you in the next one till then keep learning